This lecture will be going over the concepts of mediation and moderation. The reading for this lecture is Preacher and Hayes, Asymptotic and Resampling Strategies for Assessing and Comparing Indirect Effects in Multiple Mediator Models from 2008. If you have not read this article, please pause, go read it, and come back. We will be going over three primary topics in this lecture. First, we will be going over the concept of graphs, then moderation, then mediation. We start with graphs as a discussion point for this lecture, which is primarily focused on mediation and moderation, because in order to really understand mediation and moderation models, you have to think of them in graphical form. Now, what are graphs? Recall the fundamental form of a statistical model. Y is related to X through F. We've gone over this quite a bit in other lectures. Another way you could think about the relationship between X and Y is that as, as a set of two nodes, X and Y, that are related with the relationship indicated by a line or an arrow. That arrow represents F. So this is a visual restatement of the traditional form of a statistical model F of X equals Y, but now we visualize those relationships as basically points and lines. This is a graph. Graph is really just a mathematical object that describes a set of relations based on two properties, nodes, which are the objects in a graph. In this case, they're the variables, x and y, and edges, the connections between nodes, those set of relations. F, in this case, let's say it's a regression model, defines the nature of the relationship. But when you're trying to visualize them in a graphical form, you simply compress that functional relationship to a line. Now graphs are a way of doing visual analysis, a way of looking at a set of relations in a visual form, in a way that utilizes the perceptual expertise of the human visual system. Take for example this matrix here. This is a matrix of a set of connections, physical connections in the human brain. So every row and column is a different brain area. This is one way of understanding a set of relations in the brain, where darker colors indicate stronger connections and lighter colors towards white indicate weaker connections. You can represent the same information in graphical form. In this case, I'm using a circular graph. So every independent node here is a separate color that maps to a particular brain area and the lines show areas that are connected to each other. This graph here shows the same information that's in the matrix, but it's a little bit easier to understand the nature of the relations by looking at them as a set of nodes and edges. Now for our discussion, it's important to keep in mind that there are two types of graphs. There are directed graphs, in which case it's usually indicated by an arrow showing the line of directionality. So here, X has a causal relationship to Y. And I'm going to put the word causal here in quotes because the Causality is an implied interpretive causality in most cases. Most directed graphs assume that X causes Y, and it doesn't mean that you've made a statistical inference on in causality. It just means that that's how you set up the inferred relationship. Regression models are a form of directed graphs. You assume that Y is the output and X is the input, and you have a functional relationship between them. There can, be, there can also be undirected graphs, usually indicated with the lack of an arrow, so just a direct line between x and y. 
these largely affect or reflect associations, general associations where directionality of the relationship cannot be inferred, such as with, let's say, a Pearson's correlation. Now, as I said, the utility of graphs as a data analytic object is in their visualization. We'll be going over this in more detail in later slides, but graphs allow for you to easily see the structure of relationships in the data. And tools like structural equation modeling and uh, simple graph hierarchical models are all ways of visualizing complex hierarchical or independent relationships. And you can see them very clearly in graphical form much easier than you could in, say, equation form. It's a set of equations on the page. They also allow for you to capture the complexity and hierarchical relationships in the data. You can see them. You can describe very complex recurrent connections or recurrent relationships, uh, hierarchical, multi-step hierarchical relationships very easily by presenting them as graphs. So in this lecture, we're going to be showing both moderation and mediation models as graphs, as a way to help us understand the nature of the relationship between the variables. So let's start with moderation. Moderation models are models where the relationship between x and y is influenced or tweaked by a third variable. We'll call that w. So in this case, I have a predictor variable, which is x, or it can be a set of variables, a response variable, that's my dependent variable, and w, my moderator variables. Now, in the moderation context, you've actually seen moderation before in earlier lectures. A moderation model is an interaction model. So we would set up a moderated model on the relationship between x and y in this way, as a simple regression model where we have our intercept term, a regression term beta hat 1 for the relationship between x and y, the main effect term of w on y, and most importantly, the interaction term between x and y, uh, sorry, between x and w on y. So we have our moderating variable influence, and most importantly, the moderating effect. If we run an interaction analysis with regression, we are performing a moderation analysis. And the interpretation holds in the same way as it does with an interaction. In this case, in this example model, beta hat 1 reflects the units that y changes with x. Beta hat 2 reflects the units that y changes with w. And beta hat 3 reflects the units that y changes with x contingent on changes in w. In this case, what w is doing is impacting the relationship that x has with y. Let's think about this in an example. Let's say you're trying to study the effect of childhood trauma on risk aversion moderated by gender. So you would visualize your model in this way. Your input variable would be an index of childhood trauma. Your output variable y would be some performance on a risk aversion task. And w would be gender of the participant. So you'd set up a model like so, where you would have uh, your childhood trauma index as a main effect, your gender index as another main effect, and then the interaction term itself. That first effect of childhood trauma and risk, unmod unmoderated, we would put here. It's essentially the influence that childhood trauma is going to have on why before gender plays a role. Beta hat 2 is, I'm putting it on this line here, it's actually the influence that gender just has on risk aversion in general, overall. And beta hat 3 is the combined influence of gender and childhood trauma on risk aversion itself. 
This is the way we want to think about interactions in a lot of cases. Interactions describe ways in which two variables interrelate to change another variable. But another way of saying that same thing again is that one variable, w, changes the gain on the relationship between another variable and your output. So in this case, the beta hat 3 term is telling you how much to change beta hat 1 in order to account for the effects that gender has on the relationship between childhood trauma and risk aversion. This is a moderated model. And the calculation of these models is fairly straightforward. You just run a standard interaction analysis with a regression, but you would interpret it in a moderation context. You would assume that, or you would state that, gender is changing the nature of the relationship between childhood trauma and risk aversion in this context. The way that you state that conclusion from a moderation model is really relying on your assumed hypothesis or theory about how these variables work. So moderation you can think of as a special case of interaction where you're assuming a structure of the relationship between your variables. Now moderation is much different than mediation. In the moderation context, W just changes the gain on a relationship between X and Y. In the mediation context, what you assume is that there are variables, we'll call them M, that mediate or causally influence the relationship between X and Y. So here I'm showing a multiple mediator model where I have mediator variables 1 through M. And each mediator variable allows for X to influence Y. But the relationship that X has on Y through that mediator is determined by the presence of that mediator. X can also have its own relationship with Y, shown here with that C prime pathway. So you allow for both direct and indirect relationships with Y. So in this model, X again is your predictor or independent, independent variables. Y is your response or dependent variable. And each mi is a mediating variable. Now this is a stronger case of a third variable affecting your relationship between x and y. We call the mediating relationship the indirect pathway. This name arises because we're trying to explain the relationship between x and y. So x indirectly influences y via m which means that if you removed M, that indirect influence disappears. This C prime pathway we call the direct pathway. It's the influence that X has on Y independent of any other variable. So what we try to do with mediation models is identify third variables, m's, that have this indirect influence. x causes a change in m, and m causes a change in y. Now again, I'm using very strong causal language here. We're assuming these causal relationships in the structure of the models that we will fit. It does not mean that we can actually infer causality in most cases. These are just regression models that we're fitting but it helps to talk about them in this, in this directed sense. So we can interpret the different coefficients that you see here on their graph based off of where they sit in the relationship between x and y. So the influence of x on any m is the a pathway. So we have a1 through m in this model on the left. All the B relations are the influence of those mediators, M's, on Y. 
So again, we have B1 through M in this multiple mediator model, which means that A times B is the magnitude of the indirect influence of X on Y via its influence on M. So the indirect pathway, the indirect influence is A times B. C prime, the relationship you see here for the direct pathway, is the direct influence of X on Y after accounting for all the other indirect effects. Now there's a third variable here that I'm not showing, C. C is the total influence of X on Y without accounting for the indirect effects. This would be the regression model you would have between X and Y if you didn't have any mediators in your model. It's that total influence that is explained both by direct and indirect effects. These are the common terms you'll see in discussions or papers that use mediation models. A times B is indirect pathway, C prime is the direct pathway, and C is everything collapsed together. Now the art of the innovation of the Preacher and Hayes approach is being one of a set of ways of estimating mediation effects is in how it determines these indirect pathways. So let's take a simple case here, a single mediator model where I have a single variable M1 that relates indirectly the influence of X on Y. So I have my AB pathway and I have my C prime pathway. In order to estimate out this mediation model, what I have to do is run three independent regression models. First, I'll fit a regression model of X on Y, the C prime, the C pathway itself. So this is the total effect. Next, I'll run a regression model where M is the output and X is the input. That gives me my A pathway. And then third, I'm gonna run a regression model on Y where I include main effects for the mediator, which gives me my B pathway, and X, which gives me my C prime pathway. These three models give me my entire mediating pathway effect. The models, the, the models number two and three are the primary ones for in estimating indirect effects. Basically what this is saying, if you start with equation number three, is that Y can be described by the influence of two factors, M and X. But thanks to equation two, we can rewrite M as AX. So that gives me A times B times X is my indirect pathway, and C prime is my direct pathway. It's just a way of rewriting the three equations above. But that combined indirect pathway effect can be described solely by X, so long as you have a good and accurate estimate of how X influences M. Now for an indirect pathway analysis, for a mediation analysis, the null hypothesis is going to be that A times B equals zero. Now for each one of these models, because they're estimated separately, how am I to know whether or not an estimated indirect effect is statistically significant or statistically meaningful? In the method I showed you here on the slide, you only have one value for A times B. If you fit these three equations or these three regression models for a particular data set, you're just going to get one term for A times B and one term for C prime. Well, to evaluate it, you could just use bootstrapping. So you use bootstrapping to estimate out confidence intervals on A times B, as well as C prime and all the other coefficients in your model. And that will allow for you to determine whether or not you have a significant indirect pathway effect. So we're leveraging the resampling methods that we learned about in the resampling methods lecture to 
estimate out our confidence on the indirect pathway effects in order to make a judgment on whether or not to reject the null hypothesis. This is a very beautiful extension on how you can use resampling methods in these more complicated scenarios, these hierarchical models where you have indirect relationships between variables mediated by third variables, that if you didn't have resampling methods, it would be almost impossible to make a conclusion on your null hypothesis in the, this case. Now mediation models have some critical assumptions. First, you assume that both the fitted, ver the fitted A and B weights or edges have to be non-zero for the indirect pathway to be evaluated. In other words, you can't infer indirect pathway effects if only one link is non-zero. So in the bootstrapping analysis, if you estimate a confidence intervals for A and B separately, they both must be statistically significant. If only one is statistically significant, you could have bootstrapping reveal a significant indirect pathway. However, it's only being driven by one edge, A or B. So in order to make an inference, both have to be independently significant. They have to be real in your conclusionary space for you to interpret an indirect pathway effect. In addition, both A and B are very sensitive to low statistical powers. Actually, I take that back. Mediation models in general are very sensitive to low statistical power. Low power gives you a high false positive rate on these, these hierarchical models. So you want to be sure up front that you have enough power in your data set in order to reliably estimate out these regression model parameters for estimating out your indirect pathway effects. Now, assuming you have enough power and assuming that both A pathway and B pathways are statistically significant, one of the advantages of mediation models is they can sometimes reveal hidden relationships. In particular, sometimes the indirect pathways, the mediating pathways through M, can hide total pathway effects. So if you initially just want to run a relationship, a model that looks at the relationship between X and Y, if that's not statistically significant, it doesn't mean there's no relationship there. If you have a good reason to think that there are mediating factors, you should still run a mediation analysis because there are certain scenarios where that indirect pathway masks or eliminates the total pathway between x and y. And let me show you why. Remember, the total pathway is just x to y. So we call that c. We've already shown you in the previous slide that you can also describe that using this same equation. That the total pathway, hypothetically, if you have mediators, is just AX or AB times X plus C prime X, the indirect pathway and the direct pathway. So if you have a meaningful mediation model, you can reformulate your total pathway as being the sum of your direct and indirect pathway. Now, if we pull X out of the equation here, what that really means is, sorry, if we just pull X out and just look at the weighted relationships from each one of the edges, we say that A times B plus C prime is your total pathway effect. So you can rewrite C as being A times B plus C prime, the indirect and the direct pathway influences. So then how could you get a hidden total path? Well, a hidden total path is the case where C is zero. You just estimate out a regression model just with X and just with Y, and you don't see a significant effect, a non-zero effect. That's the same thing as saying A times B plus C prime is zero. Now, given that you have this summation term here for A times B plus C prime, you could get a zero 
as an output with non-zero a times b and c primes. And that's the case where the ratio of the two is negative one. In other words, when the direct and the indirect pathways have equally imposing influences, it can hide a total pathway effect. If a times b is negative two and c prime is positive two, that will sum together to give you zero, which means that you won't see a total pathway effect. However, you have very real and very significant direct pathways and indirect pathways. So if you have a reason to want to look at mediating effects, if you have a good hypothesis for a mediating relationship, and you first just ask, is there a relationship between X and Y, and you don't see one, it doesn't mean that your mediation model won't work. In fact, your mediation model might show you why you're not seeing a relationship between X and Y. Now let's play around with uh, mediation models in the context where we have multiple mediators. This is something you'll see quite a bit in your research, or hopefully so. Let's take the example again of childhood trauma on risk aversion, but now let's ask, is the effect of childhood trauma on risk aversion mediated by parental income, psychiatric risk, and social network size? So we would set up the model where input variable is childhood trauma again, output variable is risk aversion. We have a mediator for parental income, psychiatric risk, social network size. So the full model would look something like this, where Y is the sum of all the indirect pathways plus the direct pathway. Now, if we use bootstrapping to estimate out whether or not we uh, think that a particular pathway is statistically significant, you'll probably see results that look like this. So in this case, everything that's shown here in blue is a statistically significant effect, according to some alpha. Everything in red is a non-statistically significant effect. And when I talk about inferring statistical significance, what we're really just saying is, do we think that those edges or those pathways are real? So according to this run of the model, if I use bootstrapping to estimate out my direct and indirect pathways, I would say that there's a significant indirect pathway between childhood trauma and risk aversion through parental income and psychiatric risk, which are M1 and M2 respectively and a direct pathway between childhood trauma and psychiatric risk, but no mediating influence of social network size. Now we've talked about moderation models as separate from mediation models, but they all exist in the same class of models. And so you can ask questions about moderated relationships in a mediation context. These are known as moderated mediation models, and they look something like this. So I'm just expanding on my mediation models, but adding in a moderated effect. So now I'm taking my moderator W, my moderator variable W, and throwing it into my mediation model at one side of the mediating pathway. Now, I'm illustrating it here on the side of the relationship between X and M, so the A pathway. But you can actually put these on either that side or the B side, the relationship between M and Y, or both. It's just easier to think of it in one place when you're first getting used to these models. So in an abstract sense, what you're asking is, does W moderate the indirect relationship between X and Y via M? So now you're asking, is the mediated relationship influenced by an interaction with another variable? So the full moderated mediation model looks like this. M is now defined not just as A times X, but A times X plus E, another regression coefficient, times W, the main effect of the moderator term, plus F times xw, your interaction term. 
So A and E here are your main effect variables and F defines that moderation or interaction effect. If I go back to my full model of the mediation, so Y is a combination of the indirect pathways through M and C prime X, if I expand that out now, I've redefined M above as being AX plus EW plus FXW. I just throw that into the model. And you can see how this expands the complexity of the model. Now I'm saying that my mediation effect is itself moderated or, or tweaked by this other factor W. You start to build these very complex relationships in your data that can be very meaningful in understanding the system you're trying to describe. But if you just looked at these as a series of equations, it'd be very hard to understand these relationships and visualizing them graphically really helps you understand the nature of the way these variables interrelate to each other. So I hope you take away two things from this lecture. First, representing relations as graphs provides an intuitive understanding of complex relationships. In addition, moderation and mediation models allow for capturing relationships beyond your first order associations, beyond just X, Y, and can even reveal hidden relationships in your data. So mediator variables or mediator models are incredibly useful tools for looking at complex hierarchical relationships in your data and expanding the scope at which you understand the system you're trying to understand.